Let's talk about resonance. Resonance is not the coaching institute. <laughs> Resonance is very very important in organic chemistry. If you are able to draw resonance structures, organic chemistry will seem easy. And if you fail to do that, organic chemistry seems very very tough. So let's see what resonance is all about, and we will learn it in parts. So why do we need resonance? What's it all about? So if I draw a structure before you, and that is a famous compound, we call it. benzene its formula is c6h6 this is a structure of benzene each of these corners have a carbon atom so some guy says that i can draw benzene in another way why don't we draw the hexagon like that and then flip the positions of the double bonds and so we will end up with something like that now both of these structures contain six carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms so which of these is the true structure of benzene is it structure 1 or is it structure 2 well the answer to this question is that benzene can be represented by both these structures so both of them can describe some properties of benzene but in reality benzene resembles neither of them in fact these electrons that you see in the double bond which we call the pi electrons they keep moving and so sometimes benzene might be in this structure and sometimes it might be in the second structure so we call them the resonance structure of benzene and what benzene actually looks like is a hybrid of them so if we draw the true structure of benzene we might do something like this diagram where the pi electrons will move on each of the carbon atom and therefore what we end up is with a circle like that this circle shows that the pi electrons are moving and they are reaching every carbon atom so that is what resonance does it removes the flaw of the bond line diagrams and it is used to describe the true structure of a compound when there are more than one structures possible so we need to understand how to draw the resonance structures and we will do that in parts and the first part that we need to learn is how to draw curved arrows so here is how you draw the curved arrows you will start from a place which is rich in electrons and you will want to go to a place that is relatively deficient in electrons and by relatively deficient i mean that it is it has less electrons compared to this spot and what you do is you simply draw a curved arrow from the rich area to the deficient area and you always move an electron pair please keep in mind electrons individually do not go they always go in pairs let's see some examples for that let's say you have a compound like this where you have a plus charge on the third carbon atom and a double bond between these two so you will say that this plus charge here is relatively deficient in electrons compared to the double bond present here and so these electrons will shift from this double bond towards the plus charge and so what we do is we simply draw a curved arrow like that and we get the next structure which will be the bond shifted from left to right so we will draw the double bond here and because this carbon atom on the left lost its electrons so the plus charge will shift on the left and we end up with something like that these two are the resonance structure of this compound so what we learn from this is that from a bond electron can shift towards positive charge let's have another molecule 
now here you can see that there is a negative charge that is adjacent to a double bond this is important for resonance whenever we have two centers they must be adjacent to each other now which one of these do you think is more rich in electrons obviously the negative charge is richer in electrons and therefore electrons will flow from the negative charge towards this bond and that will cause this double bond to break because the carbon atom present here will now form a double bond with this negatively charged carbon and so this double bond breaks and the electrons are shifted to this carbon and we get a new structure that looks like a double bond present here and we have a negative charge here so this time the electrons are flowing from left to right from a negative charge to a double bond let's take another example this time we have an oh group attached to a positively charged carbon now the oxygen atom has lone pairs and due to this lone pairs this oxygen atom is rich in electrons and it is adjacent to a positive charge so electrons will flow from the lone pair to form a bond here and we will get the following structure there will be a double bond between this carbon and oxygen it is also attached to a hydrogen and see how oxygen gave away its lone pair therefore it will get a positive charge and so these are the resonance structures for this molecule now in all these structures there is one thing that you should note the left structure here has one positive charge and the right structure also has a one positive charge similarly this structure on the left has a negative charge and this structure on the right also has one negative charge and finally the final molecule that we have also has one plus charge on the left and one plus charge on the right so what i mean to say here is that the net charge in resonance structures is same so if you want to check whether your resonance structure may be right or wrong always compare the net charge if they are different then there is something wrong with your resonance structure now that we know how to draw curved arrows there are two things that you should always keep in mind the first thing that you should keep in mind is that you should never break a sigma bond while drawing resonance structures that is if you try to break this bond present between these two carbon atoms and say that we have a new resonance structure where carbon atom has a positive charge and this carbon has a negative charge this is not resonance in resonance you will only move the pi electrons and so you will break the double bonds resonance is the delocalization of pi electrons so this is the first rule and the second rule that you should keep in mind is that you must never break the octet rule and what that means is that if you are drawing five bonds on a carbon atom while drawing resonance then your structure is wrong you should always keep in mind that any atom should have eight electrons in its outermost shell and so any structure that violates the octet rule will not be correct for example if you have something like ch3 and let's say um, o minus if you look at this oxygen atom it has three lone pairs two already present on the oxygen and one generating the negative charge and now if you try to draw the resonance structure by drawing an arrow here then this is not right because if you do that you will create a structure where we have c double bond o 
and three hydrogen atoms. Now, this carbon atom here will have three bonds with hydrogen and two bonds with oxygen. That is a total of five bonds which carbon cannot have. And so, this is a wrong structure. So, keep in mind these two rules while drawing the curved arrows. Never break sigma bonds and never break octet rules. In the next video, we will take a look at some example structures and try to draw their resonance structures and get some practice on resonance. See you in the next video.